Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, The Trogly's Guitar Show. Continuing on our Spooky Guitars Month is a scary masterpiece with a story. Birthed in the early 2000s by the Jackson Custom Shop. Custom commissioned by... Nintendo? That's right, Nintendo commissioned this. Which, if you're not familiar, they're the video game company. You know, the guys behind Mario and all his friends. That old gray box you probably have sitting somewhere in your house. Or perhaps you currently play their latest edition, the Switch. But today, we need to go back to the likes of the Nintendo 64. And that game is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. So if you're not familiar with the series, you generally play as a boy named Link, and he has to go set off on a quest to defeat Ganon or some other evil creature. I mean, there's tons of these games out here, but they're kind of like action adventure slash puzzle games in a way. Within this game, you're collecting these masks, and it turns you into these different guys. Like, you got your Goron over here, which is basically like a rock creature. You can be a little plant dude that's a Deku scrub. You can have really fast bunny ears. Have you ever played Super Smash Bros and wonder where those ears came from? Yeah, it's that game. But one of these masks belonged to Azora, which is like a fish guy, essentially. And by putting the mask on, you transform into him. But a big part of these games is you use music to help you do things. Sometimes it's transporting to a new location or turning back time because you only have three days until this big scary moon comes and crashes into the world and ends your game. And in Ocarina of Time, originally you had an ocarina, which is like kind of a flute. But since you can dress up as other characters in this game, they needed to find a unique way for each of these to kind of have a storyline behind it. And for a guitar YouTube channel, the Zora is definitely the most fascinating because look and listen to what he plays. <laughs> He's got a cool bone skeleton guitar. How sweet is that? So I'm sure there were a lot of kids wishing to be a cool rock star fish dude playing an angler fish skeleton guitar. So all the way back in the day, Nintendo Power, it was just Nintendo's magazine. Sometimes you get it to learn secrets about games and you can also just learn about what's coming out, tips, tricks, and guides, things like that. But inside one of the issues was this. A bone to pick. Start rocking to the Termina Beat, the name of the town in the game, with your own one-of-a-kind Zora-style custom-made special edition fishbone guitar from Jackson Guitars. I, excuse me? I just found out this existed a couple of weeks ago, and I knew I had to feature it. So Nintendo actually custom commissioned Jackson to make this guitar as close as possible as to what we have here. Now, if you look at what he's playing in the game versus what was actually created... Yeah, it's not exactly there, but they had to make the thing playable, right? I mean, you could argue this one's more so a bone color rather than being like green and black. However, this does look pretty striking, I would say. But the ad continues to read, one lucky grand prize winner will learn scales on a special edition fishbone guitar. <laughs> They're not giving you lessons. They're just going to give you another copy of the game. Okay. But second prize is actually pretty cool. Looks like you're going to get the game as well. And one of five special edition actual official masks. Now, unfortunately, I was unsuccessful in finding the actual ones that were provided. But here's like some fan made stuff. So that was probably actually really cool in the early 2000s. And then there's also third place where you get a Nintendo Power t-shirt made of genuine dyed cotton fabric. So naturally, I learn about this thing, I have to do more research. Did they really only make one? And where is it today? I need to document this weird thing because it's cool. Even though this might not be my favorite Zelda game in the world, it blends Zelda and guitars. It's great. And lo and behold, here it is. The Music Zoo had it back in 2015. Besides just giving nice photos available to the public, they were able to give a little bit more history behind the Jackson. So apparently this was done by their custom shop luthier, Dan Lawrence. And it was indeed custom commissioned by Nintendo Power Magazine during this 2001 giveaway. However, there were an additional six instruments produced for display and sale. So that means there are a total of seven. Now I'm not sure if number one was actually the giveaway piece or did they just make seven and throw a random one? I'm not 100% sure. However, this thing is hand carved and painted by him. So all these little fishbone things you see 
here. That would have took time to do. You actually have to sculpt that out of a piece of wood. Now, there's not a whole lot of detail in the bones or anything like that, so I mean, it's not as crazy as some of the custom shop carved guitars that we've seen. However, it would certainly take time to do all that, do all the custom paint work. I absolutely adore the teeth on this thing. That's probably the best feature. And what would have been really awesome is instead of having a painted fretboard, which it looks like it is, maybe they could have scalloped away the rest of it. But then when we get to our headstock, we can see the Jackson branding. It's a USA custom shop, put very proudly on there. So I'm friends with the Music Zoo people. I see available now. Click here to see this guitar on our site. Now, I didn't have high hopes because, I mean, this article's from 2015. And yeah, it's just a link to their current inventory. But I was able to find an old listing from seven years ago when they put it up for sale with these awesome photos. Fantastic, guys. I'm glad we have complete blackout photo with this. It looks so strange and cool. I mean, if it wasn't for the Zelda influence, honestly, I'll probably agree with a lot of the commenters. It's an ugly guitar, but it has such an interesting history behind it. Because trust me, guys, Nintendo stuff is crazy. I mean, here's a sealed version of the game we're talking about, asking 4000 I mean, if you guys thought guitars were crazy, wait till you get into $2 million sealed Nintendo things. This was another one that was given away through a contest because it's the gold cartridge of the 1990 Nintendo World Championships. But the gray carts that were actually used during the championships, they still sell for pretty good money too, but it's not as cool as the gold one. But I bring all that up to prepare you for the price here, because I was really curious, I mean, what does this sell for? The Music Zoo had it priced for $10,000. And remember, that was seven years ago before the guitar market went absolutely insane. That was before Nintendo things started to become crazily valuable due to the COVID restrictions. I'm not sure where it would even sit today. Did it go up or down? I mean, I don't think one of these has publicly changed hands in a while. I was really excited to see this post though, from April 4th, 2021. Apparently this is number five. And Mr. Justin over here says he wants to know all of these Zorax owners, because he's tracking them all down. <laughs> But every forum you read, they're all like, hey, this is 10,000 plus, 10,000 plus. So I think it really comes down to, did the Music Zoo actually get 10,000 for this? And which one was the giveaway one? And where were the other ones before they got sold to public hands? That's just information that I unfortunately can't supply you guys with today. However, if you want to know what the back looks like, it's an absolute dreadful failure. It's just black. I mean, at least you can still kind of see the teeth carving, but that's a big letdown. If the entire thing was green and sculpted and all that, that would have made it even cooler, but I get it. It's more of a display piece. You see it from the front, but whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the phone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven strings. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, I did not even notice this was a seven string guitar until I started recording this episode. That's insane. This must be such a huge guitar that it can mask being a seven string that well. I get it. it it's a crazy out there guitar, but nothing looks abnormally large and long like they normally do on seven strings. So there we go. I finally found a seven string that I would maybe own. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I really want to pay 10 grand for one of these, but if you have a Zorax and you, you want to let me borrow it sure i'll do a review and demo <laughs> and maybe when i'm done buying up all the gibson models i want maybe i'll get one one day for the guitar museum but that is one fishy guitar and since we've got a little bit of time left today if this is a seven string i would consider owning as a pretty traditional guitar guy here's one guitar that i've talked about before but would be a floyd rose guitar i would have to own the Watermelon ESP. I love this thing because I used to be a produce manager for a couple of years and I, I really enjoyed that job and fruits in general just make me happy, just like fine cheeses. I don't eat fine cheese, but I've always been fascinated by them. Like I want a collection of cheese, but this mixes my love for fruit with guitars and it's just so silly. <laughs> You got a perfect watermelon airbrush job on this with a matching pink humbucker. You've got the pink exposed right down here, or red if that's what you're going for, but it's that, that the swoop right here that's got the little seeds in it too. But then what's even better is the swoop on the back. You even have the little white rind part before you get the meat of the melon. Then your headstock's got the matching paint job, but hey, the LSR style tuners, that's strange. They probably picked them because it kind of looks like watermelon seeds a bit. But I never knew the story behind this one. That's why I wanted to bring it up again today because I'd always just thought it was a custom one-off guitar because let's face it ESP does some really crazy stuff like these angel guitars 
<laughs> There's a T-Rex. Ah, I've never seen that one. Now, I have seen Godzilla, but that's some crazy work. And then who doesn't love the pizza guitar? I had to give that its own episode before. Or maybe you just want a sword? If you've got the money, ESP will build you literally anything you want. But the story of the watermelon is as follows. And this is all according to this article that I found in the website archives. Because currently, this article is no longer available. John was looking for a new guitar, and his band members were telling him to check out an ESP, because one of them just happened to have bought it and really adored it. So he went and tried some out, and it was just like, wow. He really liked that ESP guitar compared to what he was playing. And you know how guitar players are. You try one thing, you love it, you just can't stop thinking about it until you get one. So out of nowhere, he's got 20 ESP guitars at one point. But he really loved the model called the ESP M1 Custom, because as a child of the late 80s, early 90s, he was really into shred guitar. So low action, 20 inch fretboard radiuses, that was something that was interesting to him. But despite how much he loved the M1 Custom, he wanted something a little bit more unique aesthetically to pay homage to his 80s heritage. But he could never really quite think of something unique enough until one night that he was going through a local supermarket to get some supplies. And he goes through the fruits and vegetables vegetable section and he sees this big massive display with Les Pauls and a whole bunch of- oh wait no that that's my cool display. <laughs> Okay, so the supermarket thing is still there. So he goes through the fruits and veggies section and he's really hungry and everything was looking so good to him, but his eyes were fixated on the melons. The watermelons to be exact. At that moment, he realized how much of a natural masterpiece these fruits were. The two different shades of green, a clean white pith that separates the green from the bright red flesh of the black seeds. He swears he wasn't stoned but that's where the idea came to him. So he goes home, does a search on Facebook for airbrush artist, and he comes up with this guy named Steve Wright that only lives 15 minutes away. And he even had proof of doing a Kirk Hammett mummy paint job on one of the guitars before. So he messages him and he goes, I want a watermelon guitar. I want it to look just like a watermelon. And he's like, why? I don't know. I just thought it'd look cool. <laughs> like fair enough. So they worked hard to sketch out this guitar and then they just let it happen. So this was not actually an ESP official thing, which makes me really, really sad, but happy at the same time, because now we know who did the paint job. You could maybe get them to do you another one or custom commission any other airbrush artist that might be of a similar skill level. Or, you know, ESP is ESP. Maybe they will actually do it for you. But he's a professional guitar player. You can actually see him playing it here, which is a real treat to see because I've never seen this thing actually in the flesh. So there you go, John. I appreciate you and your artistic vision and love for melons. Now we just need a cantaloupe and a honeydew one. But there you go. The more you know, my friends. Too strange, slightly spooky, if you call watermelon spooky. I mean, they're pretty scary if they get thrown at you. <laughs> but we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.